whereas our native grasses uh, are, are long adapted to the climate that we have here. One of the big constraints is that uh, the native grasses, um, if you look at the cool season grasses, they're very pliable and palatable. Uh, the native grasses are uh, stiffer, um, and that's because they, uh, because uh, nitrogen and moisture were uh, so limited, um, they actually build structures in their leaves. They have a different kind of photosynthesis than our typical forage grasses. So there's a lot of fiber in this, and uh, even actually less, uh, fewer nitrogen-rich enzymes for photosynthesis. So uh, our native grasses are just a lot more efficient in terms of using the resources here, but that doesn't make them so good for uh, cattle forage. Uh, so the idea of what we wanted to try here is introducing uh, native legumes into these systems. Um, so looking at something that's complementary to the, to the prairies to boost uh, nitrogen versus adding fertilizer or even trying to add uh, typical forage legumes, which just with the way their growing season is, uh, doesn't coincide very well with what the uh, prairies do. So if you uh, seeded in a lot of red clover, you could uh, kind of shade out a lot of the things that you really wanted in the prairie in, in the long run. Um, so we looked at uh, primarily two things. We looked at this across the diversity gradient. So um, in our switchgrass monocultures, uh, our lowest diversity, just one native species, and then uh, successively more diverse prairies with uh, more native species incorporated. Um, and what we, then we looked at management, so things that we could do to limit the uh, competition for those legume seedlings. So we looked at rotational stocking uh, with cattle, um, bringing in uh, Janet's Holstein heifers to graze periodically and uh, open up the canopy and, and let more light down to the soil. And then we also compared that to mowing, which is a tool that most farmers could do and uh, many uh, conservation organizations already do some mowing. Um, so we looked at uh, diversity in the tools and uh, interseeded uh, legumes in a split-split plot design. And uh, unfortunately, after two years, we basically saw uh, zero recruitment of legumes. There, there were seedlings here and there, but uh, from a biological or ecological forage aspect, those, uh, those legumes aren't uh, really a major uh, component of the system. So. Uh, future re research, I think, would have to drill down more on uh, timing of interseeding or different kinds of management to really try to uh, complement that. So we were trying to do a broad range of things here, and, and that uh, uh, we weren't able to drill down as well on that. But we were still able to um, uh, quantify the uh, forage quality in these different diversity levels, um, which is something that we hadn't been able to do for this part of the country uh, previously. And we also looked at the effects of uh, mowing and grazing and just uh, typical more hands-off conservation uh, management uh, just with prescribed fire on the prairies. And what we found was that uh, grazing didn't really cause a big change in the plant community over time. So um, this is uh, rotational grazing with uh, cattle where they're allowed to be selective and, and choose grasses and legumes. Um, actually could be integrated with a lot of our existing conservation uh, lands. Um, so we could do more, more adaptive uh, management and research going in the future on that, I think, and um, make our uh, restoration of native species more uh, economic uh, for all landowners of all stripes. Um, the mowing uh, really uh, depressed a lot of our native forbs. So if you look out across here, um, the tall species with broad leaves that you see standing up, those are uh, native uh, sunflowers. Um, we see some, there's some yellow cone flower already flowering here, uh, goldenrods. So those are uh, really important species for pollinators and they help uh, support the food web with all the insects that they support. Um, so we like to see those, um, but in some cases uh, things like Canada goldenrod can be a real problem in our perennial grasslands. And um, mowing that twice during the summer really started to depress uh, some of those more weedy species. Um, so I think what's exciting about this project is it uh, starts to scratch the surface more on some of the more active management we could be taking with our native grasslands. Um, so not just uh, burning and uh, you know doing some hand cutting to get rid of shrubs, but uh, mowing and grazing and, and different combinations of these things could really start to create more niches uh, for different kinds of plants and wildlife and also I think uh, help to integrate um, these types of communi communities more into uh, working farms where people also need to be able to make a profit uh, off of the, the land that they have out there.